In this video, we're going to be talking about command line debugging in PowerShell. So there is a debugger available directly in the PowerShell like runtime that you can use uh, from the command line. Uh, it's really useful when you are on a system that you may not have VS Code installed on or you can't access the ISE for whatever reason. Uh, you can actually just use the command line to um, debug your PowerShell scripts. So we're going to go through um, how to get into the debugger, how to set breakpoints. We'll talk about error action preference. Um, we'll look at how to connect to other processes. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just kind of look at how to step through scripts inside the command line. So in this example, I have a basic debugging.ps1 script, um, which has one function called write line that accepts an argument and then prints out um, this line variable to console.write line. I then have a loop that calls my write line function 10 times from 0 to 9 and outputs the numbers. And then finally, I have this function that we'll go over in a little bit, um, and it's going to be used for um, enter PS host processing. Or, Enter PS host process demo. So um, let's just execute my script to see what this looks like. So I'm going to um, navigate to my OneDrive desktop. And I have this debugging.ps1 script. And you can see it output um, 0 through um, 9. So let's actually get into the debugger. And the easiest way to do that is you can actually modify your script to include wait debugger. So what that's going to do is cause the debugger to kind of like kick in once you hit that um, wait debugger command. So now I have entered my um, debug mode. And if you hit uh, question mark or H, you'll see help. And we have um, information on how to step in, over, and out, continue, quit, detach, get the call stack, list the script, um, and then repeat the previous command. So um, if I just hit uh, L, you're going to see it lists the current script and it actually puts a little asterisk to where the debugger currently is. So we're sitting on uh, line one and you can see that little asterisk there is uh, indicating that. So if I were to actually say um, step, I think step uh, V is step over, um, that's just going to advance to the next line, which is the start of my for loop. Now you can see that um, it's indicating what line it's on and if you were to list V or list the script again, you can see the asterisk has moved down here. So it's a nice little visual indicator as to um, where in the script we are. So this would be you know, similar to what happens in VS Code where it actually highlights the line and everything for you. So what we're going to do now is if you recall, we have step into, over, and out. Stepping into will access things like um, functions and other scripts um, and that kind of thing, or, or scopes that um, you know, you would normally step over if you wanted to. So, you know, I want to debug my right line function. I want to step into that function and see what's happening in there. So we're going to use then the S command here to step into things. So we'll do S and you can see we're stepping through our four uh, block and now we're about to call right line. And if I were to do a step over, we wouldn't go into the function. But since we want to go into the function, we're going to do a step into and now I've accessed the function. And if you look in here, you can see that we are on um, line three. And if we did an L, you'll see that that's where the asterisk is. And we're about to assign the args to the line. And let's do a step over. And now we can actually, um, oh, that was a step out. Um, let's actually step back into my right line. I am going to do a step over. And now you can see we went over to the next line, and we can actually access that variable in here. You can see that line is now 1. The other thing that's uh, uh, good to know when you're kind of working your way through um, pretty much the stack of things being called is you can get the call stack. So if you do k or get ps call stack, you're going to see that um, the, we have a script block, which is kind of my prompt. That's you know how I'm executing this debugging.ps1. And then debugging.ps1 is now executing, and we were on line 8 which if you look over here, um, that is our right line call. And then within the right line function, we're on line four now, because we're, um, uh, we're about to write out to the console. And uh, you can see the argument that was passed in, which was one. So if we wanted just to kind of continue then, we could say uh, C, and it's going to just execute the rest of the script. So that's kind of one way to enter the debugger. So let's look at another way, and that is via breakpoints. In VS Code, to like set a line breakpoint, you just click on the left here. And we're going to do the same thing, but um, inside, our, uh, inside our 
command line. So we're gonna put set PS breakpoint in here. And I'm actually gonna do line, let's see, we'll do line three. So um, set PS breakpoint, and you can specify one or more scripts. Uh, they can be full path or just the file name if you're in the same directory. And then a line number. So I am gonna set line three. And now if I execute my script, you're gonna see that it breaks on line three because um, that breakpoint is now available. So I will be able to print out the line. What you'll notice is since this breakpoint is set on a line, anytime, even if I continue the script, it's not gonna like continue through, you know, running the script to the end, it's gonna continue to the next time that it hits that um, breakpoint. So now you can see line is one. So it's just continuing to that breakpoint. So what we can do if we wanna just stop debugging is go Q. And then to remove our breakpoints, um, we can do get PS breakpoint, uh, remove PS breakpoint. And this will just remove all breakpoints. So um, one nice thing about line breakpoints is the line um, parameter actually accepts multiples. So you can actually put an array of lines in there. So you can see here, set PS breakpoint. I'm putting a breakpoint on pretty much all the lines I want. And if I were to ex execute that, you're gonna see it's gonna break in a bunch of new places. So continue, 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 continue. So I put a bunch of uh, breakpoints inside my script. So again, we can just remove all those breakpoints and it will no longer um, break in the script. Another thing that we can do um, to kind of set breakpoints is on variables. So this is handy if you wanna see um, the state of a variable um, changing. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint on my line variable. So if you remember in my script here, I have a line variable on line two that's being assigned to args. So I want to uh, enter the debugger whenever that variable is either read from or written to. So I'll do that. And now if I um, execute my script, you'll see that it hit a variable uh, breakpoint um, on my line variable uh, because it's read or write access. So right now it's being assigned. I think you can see that it's actually already assigned. And if I were to continue, it's going to hit the next line because this is calling console dot uh, right line. So it's about to read from my variable, and if I just continue, it's just going to you know, do the same thing. So um, that is read write access. But you can also set um, variables to just read or write access. So if you want to just read access, um, actually I think we have to clear our variables. Then we'll do read access, and now it'll only hit the variable or the breakpoint when the variable is read from and not written to. So you can see we're now we're reading the variable, but it didn't break on the writing of the variable. All right, um, another thing that we can do um, is set breakpoints on commands. So if you wanted to break when a certain command was being executed, you could do um, set PS breakpoint and then you can put one or more commands in the command parameter. And I'm gonna use my right line command. So we'll do that. And now when I go into my debugger, you can see it's hitting on the, um, the right line command. So I'm actually inside the right line command right now, which is cool. So um, it will just break every single time that certain command is called. So that's cool, because then you can um, kind of evaluate what's going on just in that one command. Um, another cool aspect of the PowerShell um, kind of debugging commandlets are the ability to execute actions when certain things happen. So, for example, um, we can set a breakpoint and include an action script block. So what this is actually going to do is um, it won't break in the debugger if you have action set like this, but it will take that action um, based on you know your, the context of your breakpoint. So I'm creating a write mode variable breakpoint, and I'm just calling write host on my line, which is the variable I'm in there. So now I've created that, and if I do the deb debugging, oops, I have my function um, breakpoint in there still. So let's clear our breakpoints. So we can just look at the one. All right, so now we just have the one breakpoint, and let's run our debugging. You can see it didn't break, but I got an additional output for every single one of the numbers. That's because it was hitting this variable bright breakpoint, and then it was calling write host. So um, it was actually writing that line variable twice. So that's cool for like logging purposes. Like if you want to see when you know variables change or functions are called or certain lines are hit, you can um, put whatever you want in that action, and then you know 
output something based on that um, for logging purposes. Um, but another thing that you can do with um, actions is you can make conditional breakpoints. So for example, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a, um, a, a variable breakpoint when it's written to, uh, and then I'm going to check the value of that, that um, variable. And if it is 5, then I want to break. So this allows you to write conditional breakpoints. You can write some code in there, like check the status of your script. And if it is that status, then you want to break in the debugger. So let's do that. And now we hit the line breakpoint. If we look at a uh, line, it's five. So my condition worked. All you have to do is just include that little uh, break keyword in there, and it's going to break based on uh, my if block here. So it didn't break on zero through four, but once it hit five, then it broke. All right. Um, speaking of automatically breaking, um, there is a new feature in PowerShell 7 that's actually extremely useful um, when you're debugging scripts because a lot of times, you know, things are not going well uh, when you're using in the debugger. So let's actually do this. Um, we're going to set error action preference to break. So this was not available in Windows PowerShell, but is available in PowerShell 7. And what that's going to indicate is like if there's a, an error. Um, that occurs, uh, break into the debugger at the point of that error. So what I'm just going to do is, I'll just put a throw here. I mean, this could be a throw from anything. Um, and we'll just go test. And now, when I execute my script, you'll see that instead of getting an error, it actually broke into the debugger where that throw is taking place. So I could evaluate the state. I could look at PS call stack if I wanted to. Um, I can look at the variables to figure out what's going on to cause this particular error. And then if you continue it, you see it throws the error. So that's what error action um, preference break does. It's pretty um, simple and easy to use and actually super functional. So um, definitely check that out if you're running PowerShell 7. All right, uh, the last kind of thing I want to show is the ability to use the console to connect to other PowerShell processes and um, debug them. So I have this start run space um, function here. And what it's going to do is create a background run space. Uh, I'm just going to open that run space. And I'm going to create a PowerShell, set the run space. And then I'm going to call wait debugger. So what that's going to cause is the you know, debugger to kick in. And that script is just going to wait until a debugger is attached. Since it's a background run space, the debugger is inactive. So that means it's just going to be waiting there. So we can actually see that in action if we do um, start run space. And now if we do get run space, you'll see that we have this run space 53 and its current stat or availability is in breakpoint. That, that's because of that wait debugger command. So it's just hanging out there waiting for a debugger to attach. What I could do is I could do debug run space right in here and specify the ID or name of the run space to attach to it. But I want to do this from a, a different process. So I want to open a different PowerShell process. So this is a different one. You can see that the ID of this one is this ID here. And then the ID of this one is this ID here. So there is a commandlet that you can use to actually debug other PowerShell processes, which is enter ps host process. And I can specify the ID of that host process to attach to it. So what's cool about this is this isn't just for PowerShell processes. I could do this to, to Windows PowerShell. I could do this to um, things that just host PowerShell, like PowerShell Universal or something like that. So now if we do enter PS host process, you can see that my process ID is different. Um, so now I'm actually inside that process. So if I were to do PID again, you can see the, um, the process ID is different. So I'm actually executing commands inside that other process. Um, and that also means I can call get run space. And you're going to see that run space 53, the one that we printed out over here, is now being shown in here. And it's in breakpoint. The other thing that you'll notice is you have this remote host run space that was created. And that happens when you use enter ps host process. You'd actually see that over here as well if you do get run space. Um, we just have this new run space that's been opened to kind of allow us to run commands across the, the processes. So now what we can actually do is we can do debug run space, and I want to do ID 53. And now you can see we enter debug mode inside that process. So if you look at our prompt, it's pretty crazy because now it's debug 
uh, process ID, and then we're in a run space. So we are in a separate process in a non-default run space um, in the debugger. So you can run all the same debugging commands in here, you know, like uh, the script, you can see I just have the wait debugger script. We can get the um, call stack, which there really isn't any. I can get variables that are defined, which are just kind of the default variables for a run space. And then I can just continue this. And um, now you can see the script completed. Uh, we can detach from this with control C. If we call get run space, you'll see that now run space 53 is no longer in breakpoint. It's actually available because it completed uh, its execution and you could use it again for something else. So uh, yeah, that, that is kind of a good overview of all the kind of debugging tools that you have available to you um, inside just a regular standard PowerShell terminal. So you can do some really powerful things if you just kind of know the correct commands to use. And um, there is actually a lot of help built in as well. Um, directly into the debugger. So in this video, we went over command line debugging in PowerShell. Um, definitely leave comments below if you'd like to see um, additional content added or make any changes.